So I'm just going to tell you about a procedure to remove a growth in the kidney called a robotic partial nephrectomy. So the kidney is important uh, to filter some of the toxins out of the blood and also make sure that we have the right fluid balance. Um, you can often survive on just one kidney, um, but um, two kidneys are always better than one. And therefore, if we can preserve kidney function, it does help you in the, in, in the future. If we do find a growth in the kidney, um, then that's normally found on a scan, and that scan's normally done for other reasons, so it's usually completely incidental. Kidney tumours rarely cause symptoms themselves, particularly when they're quite small. If we do find a growth, then um, we may suspect that this is a kidney cancer, although we can't always be entirely sure, and the smaller the growth, the more difficult it can be to diagnose. Sometimes we'll recommend a surveillance scan, sometimes we'll recommend a biopsy, although biopsies can be challenging and sometimes they don't give us the answer that we need, and so often we'll recommend a treatment. That treatment is, is often a robotic partial nephrectomy. So this is removing part of the kidney uh, with a robotic approach, which I'll explain uh, in a moment, and preserving the majority of the kidney. The alternatives to removing a part of the kidney is to try and destroy the tumour itself and this can be done by needles placed into the tumour. There are two main options for, for this. One of them is cryosurgery where we freeze the tumour and another one is microwave ablation. Both of them normally require a general anaesthetic so it's not a completely straightforward procedure and of course we don't get rid of the tumour altogether because the tumour once it's ablated is still there the anticipation is, of course, it's destroyed and it will just need close follow-up. However, we do usually recommend, if you're fit enough, that um, removal of it would be a better option in terms of cure. So the operation itself, um, to remove it, you'll have a pre-operative assessment before you have the operation where we go through your fitness for surgery and give you information about what will be involved with the surgery and just do some simple tests. You may have a tracing of your heart called an ECG, you may have some blood tests done. Then you'll be given information about the date of surgery, when to come in. You'll have some starving instructions, which is normally six hours before without any food and two hours before with just without any fluids, so clear fluids usually before that. Um, and you'll be told where to come. You may have some swabs done beforehand, and if you need those, then the instructions will be given. On the day of the operation itself, you'll come into a, a ward where You'll be seen by one of the nurses and uh, you'll, be, you'll get ready for the operation itself. You'll have checklists to do. You may have a consent form to fill in, which should have been done partly in advance. And you'll also see an anaesthetist who will explain exactly what anaesthetic is going to be done. When the time for the operation comes, you'll go down to the operation theatre itself, go to reception area, have more checklists done, and then go into the anaesthetic room where the anaesthetic can begin. And once you have the anaesthetic, which is normally a general anaesthetic, of course, for this type of operation, you'll go through into the operating theatre where we can start. It's very likely that you'll need a catheter, um, which is a tube that drains urine from the bladder, and that's usually removed the next day and put in when you're asleep. You may have a drain after the operation, which is a tube that comes out of the side and just drains out any potential blood or urine that may have leaked from the kidney. And again, that normally comes out the following day. The robot itself is a fantastic piece of technology to enable us to do this operation. So in the past we would do the operation through small incisions um, with, a, with a keyhole approach but with very straight rigid instruments or with a big open cut to give us the ability to put our hands in and do the operation. Whereas now that we've got the Da Vinci robot it means that we can through small incisions put instruments through that have articulation at the end of those instruments and we can sit in a console, put our head into a viewer and see an image inside you. We can then move our hands that are in small loops in the console and that moves the instruments inside you. So it gives us the ability to have our hands inside effectively without making a big open cut to do that. And therefore we can do very intricate operations like removing small kidney tumours and stitching up the, the base of that um, which would have been very, very difficult to do with a keyhole operation before we had the Da Vinci robot. 
There are other advantages of the DaVinci robot as well. We get magnified vision, um, we get an anti-tremor mechanism, we can put an ultrasound probe inside you during the operation and see, see very good views inside the, the kidney itself. We can also give a special dye that highlights the blood vessels um, and, and overall the procedure has come on leaps and bounds over the last five or ten years. With all this combined it means that we have great success in removing the kidney tumour itself although there always is a small risk that we have to remove the whole kidney if we feel that there's a, there's a problem during the surgery itself. There's normally about four or five small incisions um, and those are usually closed with dissolvable stitches although you may have skin staples as well that close them. If there are skin staples uh, then they're normally removed about 10 days after the operation. Normally you go home after just one night in hospital so the catheter and the drain are removed the following day. Um, the first night is not great, you do feel a bit of discomfort because of the abdominal um, gas that's been put in and the small incisions, but, but the following morning things are usually a lot better. It does take about four weeks to get over the operation. During that time you tend to just feel exhausted when you try and do anything. When you turn, twist or try and get, get in and out of cars it can feel uncomfortable. I certainly advise not driving for two weeks after the surgery. Um, you know, you should be safe to do an emergency stop and that's at usually at least two weeks. Uh, if you feel that your things are still very uncomfortable at that stage, then you should just take longer before you start to drive. After about six weeks, we get you back to the clinic and we go through the results because it takes that long to get those results back and then we can assess your recovery at the same time. The tumour is at that point has been analysed by our pathologist and we've got the exact type of tumour and we can get a feeling of, of how aggressive it might be and what sort of uh, follow-up you might need. But it's very rare to need any follow-up treatment for these. Normally it's just the surgery alone. Kidney tumours themselves aren't really sensitive to chemotherapy or radiotherapy so we don't really have an alternative uh, in, in treatment. However, Another option, of course, is just monitoring of these because they usually grow very, very slowly. So that may be something that you might be advised. Um, and if it does potentially grow, then there are tre the treatment options still available to you. In terms of risks of the operation, then um, most of the time the operations go very well with, with minimal complications. But there are small risks of bleeding uh, and infection. Um, we, it's very common to have a little bit of bruising but, but very rare to have a significant amount of bleeding that would lead to a transfusion. You will feel a bit of bloating, um, that's very common and um, that normally resolves in, in a few days. Um, there is a very small chance of converting to an open operation but that's only around 1%. There is also risk of damaging surrounding structures and the bowel sits around the kidneys. There is the spleen above the left kidney and the liver above the right although it's very rare to injure any of these structures. We may find that the kidney tumour is benign when we analyse it. Um, it can be very difficult on scans to be sure that the, uh, whether it's a cancerous or benign tumour. Um, but if this is a part removed of the kidney and we've preserved the vast majority of the kidney, then this may just be extremely good news. There is a small chance of leaking urine from the cut surface of the kidney, although this is very rare. Um, and again, there is a chance that we'd have to convert to either an open operation or a full removal of the kidney if there's a challenge during the procedure such as bleeding. So kidney tumours normally grow very slowly, so uh, on average about three millimetres a year. So by the time we find the growth, then it's usually been present for some years. Um, the risk of a kidney tumour spreading um, on average is about 1% for a small kidney tumour per year. That's a tumour under about three centimetres. Therefore, it may be that we advise that we just keep an eye on the tumour itself. Particularly if um, you know, you're on an older side and that we feel that it's very unlikely that the tumour is going to harm you. Uh, and, and if it grows, of course, we've always got the option of treating it. The other issue is the smaller the tumour, um, the more difficult it is to be sure whether it's cancer or benign. And therefore, it, it, it's worth keeping it under surveillance to see if, as it grows, it becomes more obvious whether it's a benign or cancerous tumour. I'm here to talk to you about wound care. After you are discharged from hospital, you will have some small dressings over your wound site. The nurse who's discharging you may give you some additional dressings to take home. 
you are expected to keep these in situ for at least 24 to 48 hours after your surgery. After that period, you are expected to take the dressings down. You can shower at that stage. Please do be mindful not to scrub the wounds as this can cause irritation. Please be aware that within those first 24 to 48 hours, you may see a small discharge. That's an ooze coming from the wound site. However, this is normal and doesn't necessarily mean that there's any infection present. Please be aware when you shower, do not use any perfumed soaps or body washers as this may irritate the area. Please avoid bathing for long periods as this can cause irritation to the wound site and cause potential infection. Please be aware to avoid swimming for at least four weeks as this can cause inflammation and swelling to the wounds initially as they are healing but you should also restrain from doing any vigorous exercise after your surgery. Once you have taken your wound dressings down, you will notice you will have dissolvable sutures in situ or clips. The sutures normally dissolve after two weeks of their own accord. However, it can be slightly longer for some patients. If you have any concerns about this, please contact your specialist nurse, key worker on the information provided. If you have metal clips in situ, these will generally be removed by a community nurse, which may be a district nurse or a practice nurse, within 7 to 14 days. If you have a drain in situ, please be aware that this area and this wound will take slightly longer to heal. The nurse who is discharging you may advise you to keep your dressings in this area for slightly longer and please be aware to treat this as any normal cut and graze as you take the dressings off, exposed to the air to promote healing. Uh, I'm here to talk to you a little bit now about your drain. If you have one placed in during your operation, this is a very soft, hollow tube that promotes fluid and secretions from the wound site and is generally in situ overnight after your operation. The nurse will then assess this area along with the surgeons the next day. If there are very minimal secretions coming from the area, this will be removed gently by the nurse. So the drain will have a small suture uh, holding it into position. This is removed by the nurse and the drain is then gently eased out of the area. Uh, I'm here to now talk to you a little bit about catheter care. A catheter is a small hollow tube that is gently placed into your bladder during your procedure. This is to drain urine from the bladder into a catheter bag. The catheter will have a small balloon attached to the end, which is inflated with saline during the procedure. These are generally painless and patients normally find that they get minimal discomfort. This is normally in pla placed in situ at least overnight during the operation and then is gently removed by the nurse caring for you on the ward the day after the procedure. Sometimes we have to send you home with a catheter in place if you find it difficult to empty your bladder before being discharged home. If you are discharged from hospital with a catheter in situ, please be aware that this will generally be in place for a minimum of seven days. The nurses that are discharging you from the ward will give you catheter care advice and supplies to take home. And then you'll be seen in the community or with the specialist nurses at the outpatient clinic to have this removed at a later date. If you are struggling to get a date for your procedure to have your catheter removed, please be aware to contact your specialist nurse on the details given. So after your surgery, if you have any ongoing concerns, please do not hesitate to contact the urology nurse specialists. You will be provided with the telephone number to contact us on. Please be aware that we are available Monday to Friday, 8 till 5, excluding bank holidays. Uh, concerning signs to look out for include worsening pain, that is pain that is getting worse rather than better. You should generally feel some discomfort after your surgery that may last anything up to four weeks. However, if the pain is increasing, you may need to speak to an out-of-hours doctor, your GP, or if this is acute, go to accident and emergency. If you have a fever, which is new to you, and you have got any signs of an infection or start with rigors, which are shakes, again, you may need to seek emergency care. Please be aware that a persistently discharging wound can be a sign of an infection and you may need to see your GP for this to be examined or contact the out-of-hours doctor or again, accident and emergency if you are concerned. 
You may feel generally unwell for a few weeks after your procedure. However, if this is lasting and you are concerned, again, please get checked by a GP, out-of-hours doctor, or if this is worsening, accident and emergency.